We'll sing um, Lord in Thy Presence. It's number 45 in the 11th edition, number 42 in the 12th edition. 45 and 42. It's number 47, and in the 12th edition, it's number 7. 47 and 7. Dispurses my 
Rock of Ages, it's number 54, and in the 12th edition it's 51, 54 and 51. Down at the feet of Jesus, it's number 63, and number, I'm, just, I'm sorry, 11th edition is number 66, and it's number 63 in the 12th edition. 66 and 63. <clears throat> Bye, love. 
Let's sing Sweet Hour of Prayer. It's number 74 and 71. <clears throat> 74 and 71. <clears throat> Sweet of prayer, sweet of prayer, that calls me from the world of care and bids me at my father's song, make all my wants and wishes known. In Okay, thank you, Brother Kevin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night uh, worship service. It's good to see each one of you. We're thankful uh, to the Lord for the Cheneys for leading us in the hymns that we were able to uh, sing in a spiritual manner and offer praise to our Savior and God, our Lord. Uh, so welcome, everyone. I uh, certainly hope that everyone has prayed and will continue to pray as we meet uh, this evening that we can all be lifted up and moved by the Holy Spirit and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit with us as we uh, attempt to worship once more and uh, lift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ up. So welcome, everyone. Uh, it's good to see our visiting ministers with us tonight. It's good to uh, call them visiting ministers. Uh, I don't know why I call them that, but uh, it's good to see you this, this evening. It's uh, kind of like you're just part of us. Um, it's good to have Elder Joe Miller and Elder Gary Utes with us. Uh, we're thankful to the Lord uh, for your uh, your ministry, your love, your prayers, your teaching, and 
uh, Chester being part and being with us. So uh, we certainly are thankful to the Lord for you. Um, we have several on our prayer list we want to try and mention. Of course, we continue to be in prayer for Elder Gary Utes and his health. And we pray the Lord's continued blessing upon him and his family, uh, as well as Elder Joe Miller and his family and his ministry. Uh, Elder Jamie Hancock, we want to remember him and his family in prayer and his continued recovery. Elder Stan uh, and Sister Vicki Cato, we continue to be in prayer for them as well. As, and uh, Elder Joe Helms, <coughs> excuse me. So we uh, want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, we want to remember Sister Ruth uh, Green. Uh, she has uh, been in the hospital for three nights. She's at home and uh, she continues to uh, have AFib and her heart's uh, still not in a regular rhythm. She feels that that's just part of uh, the rest of her life. Well, and, um, uh, and she's having some severe stomach problems, uh, just not uh, feeling all that good. Of course, she didn't get any rest at the hospital. So she's at home uh, feeling kind of tired. And uh, we want to remember her in prayer that the Lord would uh, heal her according to his power and might. So we want to remember uh, Sister Ruth. <laughs> Uh, it's good to see Brother Gene. We continue to be in prayer for him as well as Sister Wanda and Sister Virginia. We pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Um, Brother Josh and Chelsea and their upcoming delivery. Uh, we, we've been mentioning them of uh, regularly. And uh, I was reminded this month that, uh, or this past Sunday at uh, Metacritic that uh, this is the month. So uh, we pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them and their family, as well as Brad and Carly and Andrew and Lindsay. We just pray the Lord's blessing with them. We want to continue to pray for Sister Tammy Hooven's father. Uh, she, what I understand, will most likely be traveling down there this weekend. We ask the Lord to bless her with safe traveling and uh, to continue to heal up her father. Um, we want to remember, remember Sister Merlin uh, and uh, and our prayers as uh, well as Sister Angie and Brother JB and Sister Mary Catherine from uh, No Creek. Uh, Brother Billy Carelock, good to see him with us this evening. And uh, Ned Honeycutt. I uh, know that uh, Brother Junior mentioned uh, his son-in-law, Anthony Herlock, last uh, week. I hope and trust that he has uh, is okay. Um, and uh, we want to remember him. Um, Brother Gary and... Uh, Brother uh, Joe, do y'all have anyone you'd like to call out? Brother Eddie, I spoke to Elder Stan Cato just shortly before I saw, signed on here, and uh, he's having some severe pain. The uh, shoulder that had broken from the inside is uh, it's just more or less collapsed. And they took him to the hospital today. He was gone all day, worn out. But uh, he said uh, he's in a pretty miserable state with the pain. So I'd ask it. Uh, you mentioned him already. But I thought I would uh, let folks know. <coughs> he really needs, uh, really needs our prayers. And if it's the Lord's will, I hope he'll find some relief. Thank you, Brother Joe, for that update. And uh, yeah, we we will uh, we pray for Brother Stan. Thank you for that. Uh, of course, we continue to pray for our country. Ask the Lord's continued mercy and grace upon us. Uh, we're thankful for all the natural blessings that we have living here. We just ask the Lord to strengthen our leaders that the, that would bless He would bless them and turn their hearts unto them unto Him. And uh, that they would seek the Lord's wisdom and all that they would do to uh, run this country. Uh, we know that um, governments are under the discretion of our almighty God. Uh, so we ask the Lord's continued blessing and mercy upon us. Uh, we're thankful and pray the Lord's continued blessing on our military, first responders, and uh, people in that role as well. We certainly have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, we are uh, able to be here tonight. What a great blessing. We're able to assemble ourselves together in this uh, manner. I believe that's a great blessing. 
uh, and uh, we're able, we believe, to be part of this kingdom of God, which is not of this world and, and it's in this world. What a great blessing that is, that uh, we are able to uh, reflect and think on and hear about things of an eternal nature uh, that God has secured for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Um, that is a tremendous blessing, and that surely should be something that gets us through every day in which we live. So praise God for that. Uh, does anyone have anyone else? Brother Gene? Uh, the reason we're not meeting at it better trick to mind is because Tim has COVID. So uh, let's let's remember him in prayer, please. Brother, uh, Tim has COVID. Is that what you said? Yes, that's right. All right. Oh, well, sorry to hear about that. I hope it's not, uh, he doesn't feel too sick or anything. And uh, I hope that uh, the Lord would heal uh, rapidly. Thank you for that update, Brother Gene. Um, so I, don't want think, to... I don't believe Caleb's feeling well either. He's been sick for a while. Yeah, he left early kind of Sunday. So, uh, so we want to remember Brother Caleb and Tim. Just pray the Lord's blessing upon them. Good to see Sister Angela. So we hope and trust that the Lord will shield her. Is there anyone else? Okay. Thank you for that. And, uh, well, we'll move on with our worship service this evening. Uh, we'll have a hymn as an opening and uh, ask Elder Gary Utz if he'll open service with prayer and uh, have Elder Joe Miller to come forth and preach for us all by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, in which we trust. Uh, Brother Kevin, in whom we trust. Um, Brother uh, Kevin, what number do you have to open? Brother Andy, we've turned to In Heaven, My Choicest Treasure Lies. It's number 197, and I believe it's 191 in the 12th edition. 197 and 191. <clears throat> And have my choices treasured eyes. My hopes are playmates above the skies. Tis crystal bright and morning star shows my affections from afar. Oh, Brother Gary, it's good to see you this evening. Uh, we just pray the Lord's blessing upon you in prayer. Thank you, brother. Please pray for me as we look to the Lord together in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank thee tonight for thy many blessings. We thank thee for another opportunity to meet as we have tonight to worship thee, to give thee the praise and the honor and the glory that is do thy name, and though we will never reach that place where we give thee what is truly due in this time where we look forward to one day being able to praise thee as we ought, in that place that there is prepared for us. 
Dear Lord, while we're here in this world, help us to be faithful, to be laborers, dear Lord, in thy vineyard. We thank thee, O Lord, for not allowing us just to continue to stand idle in this world where we would be if it were not for thy grace and thy mercy and thy calling, but that thou hast placed us and given us a responsibility to sing and glorify and honor thee. Lord, may we be about that tonight. We ask, dear Lord, that thou would just bless us with a heart that is truly thankful and that we would not only, dear Lord, be here, but we would present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto thee, which is our reasonable service. And dear Lord, that uh, we might worship thee and love thee with all our heart and our mind and our soul. And dear Lord, we know we can't do any of these things without thy grace, so we Beg, dear Lord, that thou would just bless us with thy manifest presence, with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, that the preaching might be that which is pleasing in thy sight, that we might have ears to hear it, eyes to see it, and heart to understand it. Brother Joe might be blessed to preach in power and demonstration of the Spirit, to thy glory and thy honor and thy praise. Well, Lord, we just ask that thou would lift him up, O Lord, just deliver him from all the battles that are going on, uh, as he's battling uh, uh, to be faithful to thee, O oh Lord, we all fight that good fight of faith, and we pray, O oh Lord, that thou would give us strength uh, to be true laborers in thy vineyard. Lord, we think of the many of thy brethren that have been, many of thy little children that have been mentioned here tonight, uh, Brother Stan, Brother Caleb, uh, all of those, uh, Brother Tim, all of those that have been mentioned, so many, Lord, we can't name each and every one by name. But, O oh Lord, we ask that thou would bless them with that which they stand in need of and supply them strength as they face each day as thou hast promised. And, O oh Lord, for their sickness, would thou uh, apply thy healing hand and just comfort us, O oh Lord, and give us strength. Uh, we know that as we look to thee, we'll always find just what we need and what we would we stand in need of that would always give us that which is good for us. And, oh, Lord, we're just thankful for that sweet promise that we can rest in that tonight. We thank thee for little Meadow Creek Church and what it means to us to be able to meet here on Wednesday nights. And we ask, dear Lord, that continued blessing on them and all the ministers that go in and out among them. Please be with Brother Eddie as he labors in thy vineyard in that part of the country, Lord, just supplying to him that which he needs each and every day to remain faithful to the truth. And we just thank thee for him. We thank thee for all the dear elders that thou hast given unto us and ask thy blessing upon them, O Lord. And Lord, just we thank thee for our land and nation, what it has meant to us to be so blessed to live in a, in a place where we have had relative freedom for these many years, O Lord, to be able to worship thee uh, after the dictates of our own conscience. We know that was no accident, oh dear Lord, but it's the work of thy hand that thou hast preserved us and kept us. We pray, O oh Lord, that that might continue to be the case. But whatever that might be, in accord with thy will, O oh Lord, help us, no matter what the case is, that we would remain faithful and earnestly contend for that faith once delivered to the saints. What a comfort it's been to our hearts, O oh Lord, what it means to us tonight to know and understand that there's a Savior uh, who came into this world and saved to save his people from their sins, and that he is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just wish and desire, O oh Lord, to declare Jesus Christ and him crucified more and more faithfully until it comes our time to leave this old world. No, oh Lord, give us a sweet, sweet and peaceful time then when that takes place. Take us home to be with thee. We thank thee so much again, O oh Lord, for all of thy wonderful promises. And we look to thee tonight, Lord, just bless us. Continue to bless this meeting. Forgive us of our many sins, our faults and failures. Just be with us, we pray. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for our sake. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. We certainly appreciate that prayer. Uh, Brother Joe, it's good to see you again. We know it's been a while, and uh, we've kind of heard you through recordings on Saturday morning meetings, and we're just uh, thankful for your ministry, and we pray the Lord once again will bless you here tonight. 
Thank you, Brother Eddie. It's good to see you and everybody else. And I really appreciate it in your opening remarks. A necessary reminder, I always have a fear for myself that we can begin to take these great blessings the Lord has blessed us with for granted. And, and if we just stop for a minute, just consider, Brother Gary mentioned it in his prayer, just consider where would we be if it hadn't pleased the Lord to call us by his spirit, by his grace. And 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 just think for a moment, what wonderful things we've been blessed to see. First him, I think we, uh, Brother Kevin called tonight, that chorus, redeeming love has been my theme, shall be till I die. I think they borrowed that from another hymn. Probably there is a fountain filled with blood, but that's the line that I absolutely love. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. That's the greatest theme that's ever been revealed uh, here on this planet Earth. God is glorified and all he's done. He's glorified in his creation. Yeah, he's glorified in upholding the world and the fact that uh, <laughs> the earth's still spinning day by day and all things are upheld by the word of his power. But I don't believe anything. Uh, has brought a greater glory uh, to our great God and the redeeming love that he's extended to his people through and by our Lord Jesus Christ. And he did that to the praise of the glory of his grace. Then we sang that last hymn. There's a line in it that really struck me too. Uh, in heaven, my choices treasure lies. And uh, this is speaking about verse, the third verse, uh, then, and it's talking about when I get there, when we get to heaven, then should I see and feel and know what tis to rest from sin and woe. Isn't that a wonderful thought tonight? Someday we'll be completely away from and at rest uh, from the struggles within ourselves and from all the, the sin and evil in the world and from every sorrow and woe and worry and pain. Wonderful to think about. And folks, that's going to be a reality for every blood-bought, chosen, redeemed, <laughs> sealed, preserved child of God. I want to go to Luke chapter 24 to start tonight. and don't really know where I'll go from there, but I do want to read a little bit of that. I'm going to start in verse 1 of Luke chapter 24. <clears throat> It says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed Thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Now, much we could say about this account of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior from the dead. One thing that, uh, as I was reading through this last few weeks and again this evening, uh, it says there in verse 4, two men stood by them in shining garments. These two men were in another of the Gospels. It tells us they were angelic beings. And they were sent there, the two of them, as witnesses <laughs> that Christ had indeed risen from the dead. And I thought of the scripture that said, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Now, I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I want to go down to verse 13. And it says, Behold, two of them, uh, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together 
and reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been him which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, this is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women said. But him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the thing concerning himself. I'd like to maybe just try to speak on that a little bit. You know, one thing we know, uh, I believe that if someone's born of the Spirit, this is my personal belief, but... Uh, I don't think that we have to have Bible scholarship. I don't think we have to have, uh, we don't have to have outside evidence that the scriptures are indeed the word of God. Uh, I've testified to this since I was, that's something I've known since I was a little child. I don't know how I knew it other than it, I guess it pleased the Lord to show me and to show you, I would suspect I've had doubts about many things in my life. I've had many doubts about myself, but I don't think I've ever doubted since I was a child that this Bible, that we are blessed to have, uh, most of us have more than one copy in our homes. Uh, I believe we have, God's people have the witness within herself. We know this verily is the written word of God. Uh, but there are many evidences in the scripture itself, the Lord himself uh, gives uh, evidence and bears witness that this Bible, these 66 books of this Bible, were inspired by the Spirit of God and have preserved unto this day by the power of God. And it's said there, uh, he began at Moses, began at the beginning. The first five books of the scripture were the five books of Moses, began at Moses and all the prophets. And then I'm going to jump ahead over to verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. I believe that covers the entire Old Testament scripture right there. <laughs> in another place, uh, several other places, I think it's in the fifth chapter of John, the 39th verse, the Lord told those folks there, said, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. In the 22nd chapter of Matthew, the Lord was speaking there of one of the Psalms, and he said, uh, how, uh, how is it that David by the Spirit calleth him Lord? That tells us out of the mouth of the Lord himself that what David wrote in those Psalms 
He wrote what he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. I'm going to give you just a few more scriptures along that line before I may go on to something else. I want to go to the book of Acts now. Probably in the second chapter, I'll start. Verse 25, Acts chapter 2. It said, For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt, thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. We're told right there that David, King David, was also a prophet of God. <laughs> and what he spoke, uh, the Lord said in Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. And I won't take time to go through them all. I couldn't uh, if I stayed here half the night. But I don't even know how many times I've never gone through and tried to establish. But I don't know how many times the Psalms refer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in a sense, I believe the very first one in one sense certainly does. Brother Gary, you and I spoke of this not long ago, you know, where it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of, of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his, de law is in the, uh, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. It says there he'll be like as a tree planted by the rivers of water, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, certainly there's an instruction in that, for the Lord's people, how we ought to live. <laughs> we're not to uh, uh, we're not to uh, uh, if I can even remember what I just said to you. I apologize. We're not to sit in the seat of the scornful. We're not to stand in the way of sinners. And we are to meditate in the law of the Lord. And I think there, uh, that's not just referring. It's certainly not just referring to the law of Moses or, or the uh, the law of service. I think in that instance, the law of the Lord is talking about the word of God, the written word of God. And we are to meditate in that. I don't know that anyone else ever meditated in it day and night. And I know that the Lord, whatsoever he doeth, shall and has prospered. The next Psalm, Psalm 2. <laughs> It speaks entirely, the entire psalm speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? I believe it starts, the rulers, the kings that gathered together said, we're going to cast his bands asunder. And it said, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. He'll have them in derision. Certainly that's a prophecy of what took place to the Lord when Pilate, uh, when the chief priests and Pilate and when Herod gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed, and it says in this same chapter I just read you, uh, or, uh, or, or else it's in the fourth chapter, I'm not going to take time to look, but it, it says there to do whatsoever God's counsel had determined aforehand to be done. And the Lord told them back in that section of Luke that I mentioned, he said that these things must be. 
And the next verse down after the one I read you, I believe, it said it behooved Christ to suffer and to enter into his glory. That word in the scripture, behooved, means it is something that was absolutely necessary. It was necessary that the Son of God come down from heaven. It was necessary that every Old Testament prophecy of him be fulfilled. It was necessary. It says in Hebrews chapter 2, it behooved him to be made in all things like unto his brethren that he might be a faithful high priest over the house of God. And in that same section of Hebrews, it tells us he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And it tells us that when we go to him as our great high priest, that we can come boldly under the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, that he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Whatever those infirmities might be, he walked here as a man. He lived as a man as he walked here on the earth. The only, <laughs> only two differences I can think of right now, and they certainly go hand in hand. He's the only one that ever walked upon this earth that did not have an earthly father. And he is the only one, the only man that ever worked, walked upon this earth without a sin nature. No sin about him whatsoever. I won't bother to look up or quote too many more of these scriptures, but I'll just remind you of a few of them if I can bring them to mind. It says a little further over in the book of Acts, it says that God spake by the mouth of all his holy prophets. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This book we're told is profitable. It's profitable for all things. <laughs> the principles of the Bible, of the written word of God, you can apply them to every area of life even if they don't specifically spell out exactly uh, the circumstance we're in, the basic principles that they lay out apply to everything we will ever face in this life. Yet above all that, the primary witness of this book is that the Son of God ha has been sent forth. He came down from heaven, fulfilled that which the Father gave him to do, laid down his life, put away the sins of his people and was seen here. I've mentioned four witnesses. Two angels were witnesses uh, that he was resurrected from the dead. Later on, these two men on the road to Emmaus, they didn't know who he was. They, he says their eyes were beheld, beholden. <laughs> and by his power, he withheld from them the knowledge of who he was. And he spoke all these things to them. And they got to the village where they were going. They went in. He sat down. And then as they spoke with him, he disappeared from their midst. And they said, did not, did not our hearts burn within us? And they ran back to Jerusalem. Two more witnesses of the risen Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we have an abundant witness in the scriptures themselves that uh, I think I'll use 1 Thessalonians 2.13. I want to go to that now. What Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. He told him in the first chapter, he said, knowing brethren, beloved, your election of God, <laughs> he could see the evidence. They turned from idols to serve the living God. He could see the great love they had for the brethren. And he said, knowing brethren, beloved, your election of God. Then in chapter two, verse 13, he said, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, 
the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now, one thing we as old Baptists earnestly contend for is that the word of God is foolishness. The preaching of the gospel is foolishness. It can't be comprehended. It can't be understood unless one has already previously been born of the Spirit of God. <laughs> Believing the testimony of the Scripture will not make one a child of God. I contend it's impossible to believe the testimony of the Scripture unless we have already been born of the Spirit of God. John writing in 1 John, uh, a verse I know as well as I know my name, and I'll apologize to you that I'm going to have to go and read it. 1 John 5 and 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Paul said he's thanking God there that when he they heard the gospel preached to them and he preached it to them and the brethren that were with him preached it to them in the demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit. He said it didn't come in word only, but in much assurance in the Holy Ghost. When they heard it, they received it not as a word of man. <laughs> when I try to preach to you, when Brother Eddie preaches to you, Brother Gary or anybody else, if they've been raised up and called by God to preach the gospel, and or if you're reading it, whatever the source may be, if you have the comprehension and the conviction that this is not the word of men, this is not something that a group of men got together some way or another and compiled over several thousand years, but this verily is the word of God. And when you hear the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, the preaching of Christ and him crucified, and Paul said he would let absolutely nothing supersede that in anything he went about preaching to the people. Though he was able to use, uh, he had more knowledge and he had more uh, worldly wisdom, spoke many languages, though he could have tried uh, to greatly impress them with the knowledge that he had, those things he counted as dung, and he would not let anything stand in the way of the simple preaching of Christ Jesus and him crucified. <laughs> and when we just use that phrase, Christ and him crucified, that entails more than any of us could ever tell in a lifetime, my brothers and sisters. I truly believe that. Because when we talk about Christ, we have to look back and see who he is, and see what the testimony of the scripture uh, says about him whose goings forth have been from of old, even from everlasting. I thought of a few more. I'm bouncing around, but I thought of a few more of those psalms. It said the first psalm referred to him, the second psalm referred to him, says there, kiss the son. Uh, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And if you follow that through into the first chapter of the book of Hebrews, he's speaking there of when Christ again was raised from the dead. The 16th Psalm spoke about the resurrection of Christ. I just read that to you from Acts. David by the Spirit wrote of the resurrection of Christ hundreds of years before it ever took place. The 22nd Psalm, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You can read through the entire 22nd Psalm. It's a picture of Christ hanging, crucified, lifted up between heaven and earth. And could there be any doubt in the mind of any born again child of God 
that the 23rd Psalm, which says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the shepherd of the sheep. And he says there, the Lord is my shepherd. Every child of God can bear witness to that. And even when we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, he is there with us. And we'll dwell, it says, in the house of the Lord forever. The fairest among the children of men, another psalm declares him to be. Psalm 110, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. I've read that's the most quoted verse out of the Old Testament in the New Testament. I believe it's quoted there in the New Testament five different times. And then just a little bit further down that 110th Psalm, I'm going to get off track again, pardon me. I mentioned this to the folks Sunday morning. I mentioned when I began to see, when I began to get a little bit of light and a little bit of understanding that salvation was of the Lord, that God had a purpose, an eternal purpose, a purpose that can't be disannulled, a purpose which he purposed in himself, a purpose, it says, uh, according to election that might stand. And that means God's purpose of election in choosing a people and in calling that people, that means that purpose can't be disannulled. There's nothing can be done to stop or frustrate that eternal purpose of God. When I began to understand those things, I remember having a discussion with my wife. And I said, you know, I've heard these things here lately. And when I first began to hear them, I, they upset me so bad because it went absolutely against the grain of what I'd been taught from a child upward. And I said, you know, Lisa, we have got, if we're going to believe the Bible, we're going to believe these that the Bible is the word of God and that every word in it is the truth. We've got to figure out a way to deal with these things. They're put there for a reason and they have a meaning. And I've heard them explained away in various different ways, but I wasn't satisfied with any of those explanations. And my wife said to me 30 some years ago, she said, well, what about where it says whosoever will? And I don't know that I could have given an answer then. I hope I could give an answer now. The third verse of Psalm 110 says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauty of holiness from the dew of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. A man dead in trespasses and sins has no will to seek after God. There's none that seeketh after God. There's no fear of God before their eyes. If one begins to seek after God, God has already sought him out by his spirit. And they are, and they will indeed be made willing in the day of his power. I want to get on one more point and try to uh, bring this to a close. I've tried to express, I hope, just a few verses which are proof if we need it. And I started out by saying, I really don't believe. I don't believe if someone does not have not been born of the Spirit, therefore does not have the faith which is of God, which is the gift of God, I don't know that it's uh, possible to convince them that the Bible, every word of it, as I said, is true. It's the inspired word of God. I don't know that it's possible uh, to convince someone that hasn't been born of the Spirit and does not have faith, the faith of God, the faith which is a gift of God. I don't know that it's possible to convince them uh, if they're convinced God doesn't exist. I don't know that we could... Uh, you could use, if you were smarter than me, you could use scientific proofs and all different kind of things. And books have been written to prove the creation account. But I think of this. This is a key, folks. 
<laughs> he that believeth, uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Think of this as well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, Their eye hath not seen, neither e nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, usually when that verse is quoted, it's quoted as though there's a period there. Now, I certainly believe there's a sense, and it's usually a Many times it's applied to heaven and immortal glory. <laughs> and I certainly believe it's true. It has never even entered into the heart of man. How wonderful and how glorious that is going to be to be gathered together with the Lord in that place. But it has an application right here in time too. For I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But the next verse says, But he hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. The Spirit, it says, revealeth all things, searcheth the deep things of God. We've been born of the Spirit. We have the, we've been given the capability to understand spiritual things. And I don't care if we spend a lifetime in the study of this written word of God. I've already impressed the point, I hope, that the preaching of the gospel has never, never has, never will. It has never regenerated one soul. That is the work of God. That's the work of the Spirit of God. But after one's been born of the Spirit, we need the Scriptures. We need the Gospel. We need to hear it. We need to study it. We need to be reminded of it. Because most of us anyway, I, I don't think it's wrong to say all of us, all of us, we need to be reminded of things over and over. <laughs> uh, lest at any time, as Paul said in Hebrews, we let them slip we need to be reminded but how thankful i am tonight i'm so thankful that this this has been called the book of books and i don't think that's sufficient i don't think uh, i've made the statement before you can take every book that's ever been written by man since the first one was ever written down you can take the millions and millions and millions of books that have been written and printed in every in every language in which they've been printed on the face of this, this earth. And you could put them all in one big, huge, enormous pile. And not a one of them or all of them taken together. They're in a completely different category than the inspired, preserved Word of God. And as Paul was thankful that the Thessalonians by the Spirit of God had been made to see that this is not the word of man, this was not the testimony of man, but it verily is the word of God. I hope tonight to be thankful myself. I hope tonight that you're thankful, that you've been blessed to see, that you have been blessed to have the written word of God, been blessed to believe it, been blessed... <laughs> And we should continually desire to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read one more passage, and then I'm going to close, I promise. 1 John chapter 5, where I'm going back to, where it was a few minutes ago. I'm just going to read about, I don't know, several verses. I already read you the first one, but I'll read it again. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And that word is means already has previously been born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. 
John, in another place in this same book, put it this way. We know we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's a strong evidence that we've been born of God. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. <laughs> what do they bear record of? One thing they bear record of is what John has just written there, that Jesus is the Christ and that Jesus is the Son of God. The Father bore record of that when he raised him from the dead, declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. He declared it and bore witness to it again when the Son of God ascended back to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God is bearing witness, always has been and right now continues to bear witness here upon the earth. <laughs> I hope when we preach the gospel that the Spirit of God through that is bearing witness that this is the testimony of the Son of God. I got to quote Brother Powell's, Brother Elder Sonny Powell's when I get to these Two verses here, verse 7 and 8. I always think of him, and I heard him preach one time. You know, I don't know if you all know this. I'll make you aware of it. Many, if not most, maybe all, of the newer translations uh, that are supposedly better than the King James translation, which I won't have, folks, just won't have it, but many of them, supposedly, uh, many of them, they'll have a little footnote. They'll say these two verses or this certain passage is not found in the, the older manuscripts or the best manuscripts or some such language. Brother Powell simplified that as he always did when he preached. He said those sources they're referring to are not the source from which our Bible was translated to start with. And he said, I would warn you and admonish you that the reason that little footnote is put in there to start with is to try to cast doubt in your mind about the testimony of the scripture about the three in one Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'll tell you, even without that verse, it's established throughout the scripture. That God is, uh, that there is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Here it says Father, Word, Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That is bore out throughout the scriptures. But I'm going to keep earnestly contending that this passage and every other verse contained in this King James Bible belongs there. And no footnote from anybody is going to cause me to disregard it. And I would encourage you to feel the same way. I hope I'm saying that kindly. Folks, <laughs> anything that casts doubt upon this written word of God, I'm just not going to pay much attention, not going to pay any attention to it at all now. But we're told there are three that bear record in heaven. And then there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. 
And I won't go into that other than to say that what they agree in one about is that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God. And that Jesus, by the shedding of his own blood, uh, by that one offering, he's perfected forever. He's accomplished and fulfilled and finished everything required to save sinners and save them forever and take them home to be with him at his time. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. <laughs> three times I can think of, three occasions I can think of, where the Father spoke from heaven. They heard a voice. It said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, which I can only interpret to mean you already believe, you've been born of the Spirit, in that given faith, in that given the ability to believe, so that if when you do, if or when you do hear the gospel preach, it means something to you, and by the Spirit of God you have an understanding of it, and then you're already a believer, he says, but he says that you might believe. In other words, that we may continue uh, to grow in understanding, knowing better than we do now. Is there not a hymn says more about Jesus? Would I know? <laughs> That's the point I'm trying to make to you. Uh, the better we know him, I have no question at all. The better we know him, the more we love him, the more thankful we are for what he has done for us. Another old preacher I knew, speaking of the Bible, said it's a book we'll never finish in this life. The most blessed men that ever studied it, the most blessed men that ever spoke upon it. <laughs> I'll have to say again, the half in that regard, the half has not been told. It's so deep, it's so wide, it's so high, and it's so vast. Because the one who inspired it, the one whom it reveals, <laughs> Uh, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Brother Eddie, I'm looking at you, and I always, ever since you made this statement, I'm reminded of it. The psalm that said, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. We're not going to get the fullness or get to the end of it in our understanding here in this life. Oh, but the better, the more effort we expend doing that. <laughs> Not only the happier we're going to be, uh, but the better off, uh, the better off and the more thankful I would hope that we would be, the more we learn of what the Lord has done for us. And you know how much of it we deserved? Absolutely nothing, folks. We didn't deserve the least of God's favor or blessing, and yet he continually, day by day, gives more grace to his people. I, I'm sorry, I'm going much longer than I intended to. I pray uh, the Lord will bless each one of you. I'll tell you, uh, looking ahead at my schedule, I probably won't be back for a few weeks anyway, uh, but I'm thankful to see all of you, and I would encourage you pray one for another. Uh, praise Brother Eddie said for this nation 
I'll just be honest with you. I look around most of the time. I just think it looked pretty hopeless. How's that for ye of little faith? But when you speak of God, there's absolutely nothing hopeless. <laughs> so that's a that's a ridiculous thought to have and a ridiculous statement for me to make. But I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I feel that way. I know that in the end, the Lord, he's triumphed and he'll, he's going to enforce his triumph on all his creation someday. I know that. But I want to believe uh, that even in the dark times in which we live, I still want to believe and pray the Lord to help me to believe it stronger uh, that uh, his arms not shortened. I know that and he can still move among his people. So uh, pray one for another and uh, any flaws and any errors and, uh, uh, and, and any uh, uh, twisting, winding, and rambling on my part, please just overlook that. And I hope that in some small manner, I hope the truth has been proclaimed. Doesn't matter who's proclaiming it. Uh, it's not about us, not about any man, not about exalting any man. <laughs> I uh, had a guy one time tell me he'd been to a preacher's contest. It wasn't a primitive Baptist. They'd had a contest. Who could preach the best sermon? There's no contest in this, folks. It's not about us. It's about our Lord and our Savior and our great God and our Redeemer. Lord bless you. Well, I believe the Lord has blessed us this evening. Um, we are thankful for the message that we've heard. Uh, and the blessings of the Spirit on Elder Miller. Um, you know, it is comforting to accept that this is the Word of God and that we need no outside evidence for it to be proved or persuade us and I think that's what's gotten into a lot of God's people. They take evidence to persuade them that's outside. And it, then there's evidence to dissuade them from the outside. But, you know, when the Apostle Paul came preaching, as Elder Miller said, how intelligent he was of worldly things. He says, I came not to preach unto you with wisdom of the world, but with the wisdom of God. You know, in the 119th Psalm, you know, this is so so comforting. It just fits what Elder Miller said. It says that I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. So what the, the psalmist here is saying that, well, I have more understanding because all of the words of God, they are my meditations. That is my thought. That is what my, that's what my source is. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I believe that there, if there was more that the, the Lord needed us and wanted us to have down here on this earth, he would have inspired it and included it in this holy canon that we have here today. This is our library. 66 books. So praise God. Thank you, Brother Joe. We thank the Lord for you. Uh, that uh, the blessings of the Spirit were administered to us tonight to stir us up in these pure things praise god praise god uh brother kevin what number do you have brother andy we're going to sing our uh in mercy lord remember me it's number 101 and number 96 101 and 96 in mercy lord remember
Amen. Well, it certainly is good to worship with all of you tonight. Um, I hope that you're able to go away rejoicing. We have a risen, reigning, and returning Savior. So, um, Lord willing, we'll uh, assemble ourselves this uh, weekend with a portion of the Lord's people uh, to... Uh, Praise God once more by his spirit. Does anyone have any announcements they'd like to bring forth? Well, it's good to see each one of you. We'll ask Brother Gene if he would uh, close us with a prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before thee tonight, we want to thank thee, Lord, for the sweet prayer that Brother Gary brought to us and a wonderful message that the other day brought to us. We thank thee, Lord, that thou hast been with us and watched over us all of the days of our lives. Realizing, Lord, that we're sinners and that we come so short of doing our will. We pray, Lord, for those that are sick and on the beds of affliction. We pray especially for Sister Ruth, Lord, that thou would heal her, that her heart might start beating normal again. We pray for the upcoming meetings that our little churches would be having, that thou would be one in our midst, that we might feel thy presence, that we might be able to give thee the honor and the praise and the glory that's due thy great and holy name. Continue to be with the rest of all of us throughout the rest of this week. Watch over us, guide us, and lead us. In Jesus' blessing, may we ask it all. Amen. Thanks to the Lord for that prayer, Brother Gene. Uh, pray the Lord's blessing upon each one of you. And until we meet again, we pray that the uh, Lord will you'll feel his presence with you. Have a good evening. Good preaching, Brother Joe. Lord bless you. Amen. Wonderful meeting tonight. Just thank the Lord for everything. And he's been so good to us. God bless you all. It's good seeing you. Good to see you. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Good night, Sister Gail.